there are six graphs that you really have to focus on in this unit. And honestly, that's probably about 80% of the chapter is just graphing these six graphs and all the different variations with different amplitudes, phase shifts, and so on. Uh, the other 20% is a little bit of identities and simplifying, which is the stuff that we've been talking about. Now, today we'll do cosecant and secant graphs. Okay, The tangent and cotangent we'll leave for Monday. Um, cosecant and secant, if you know how to graph sine and cosine, are actually really easy. Okay, How many of you can say that you know exactly what sine looks like? Just regular sine. Everybody should have their hands up, otherwise what are you going to do today on the quiz, right? How many of you can graph regular cosine? Okay. So we're going to do things a little differently than the way they are in the packet. And let's start with graphing y equals sine theta just to review, okay? Where does sine start? Zero. And then what does it do? Goes up to one. And what is the angle there? What's the uh, input? Pi over, pi over 2. And then at pi, it's 0. At 3 pi over 2, it's negative 1. And then at 2 pi, we've completed one period, and that's back at 0. So this is regular sine, right? Everybody's good with that. Now, instead of doing a table and doing all this and that, we're going to use this graph to create the cosecant graph. Okay? So we're going to use this graph to get the cosecant graph. So here was our theta axis, and this was y. Or if you want to use x and y, that's fine. It's the same thing. How is cosecant related to sine? Not inverse, but reciprocal, right? So let me ask you a question. What's the reciprocal of zero? Undefined, right? So just hold that thought. At zero, the reciprocal is undefined. What's the reciprocal of one? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to label the axis the exact same way. Pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. We said that 0 is weird. Pi over 2, it doesn't change. It's still 1, right? Reciprocal of 1 is 1. What about at pi? At pi, we're at 0, so the reciprocal of 0 is undefined again. At 3 pi over 2, the sign is negative 1. Reciprocal of negative 1 is still negative 1, right? And then at 2 pi, back at 0, Another undefined value, right? Here's what we're going to do for all the undefined values. Those are going to become kind of like asymptotes. Because there's no value for the graph there anyway. Okay? And we're going to use some common sense here to get the rest of the graph. If... I do the reciprocal of 1, what did we get? What if I did, so what would y be approximately, right where my pen is? A half. What would the reciprocal of 1 half be? 2. So is it clear that right around here in the middle, sine is right about here, so cosecant should be higher than that, right? Because the reciprocal of a fraction is going to be bigger. Does that make sense? So what's going to end up happening is we're going to get kind of like these little baby parabolas that mirror the sine graph. Does that make sense? And actually the same thing happens in the second quadrant, or in the second part of the graph. Okay, If we were to keep going, so here's, here's what I mean by using sine as a reference. The green graph here is the regular sine graph, right? So if you actually know how to graph sine, then all you have to do is find the zeros, make those into asymptotes. Do you guys see what I'm talking about? And then find the high points and find the low points, and then those just turn into parabolas when you do cosecant, and that's it. Pretty straightforward if you actually know the sine graph, right? So let's do some details. Uh, let's do the important info 
for cosecant. One period is how long? Still 2 pi. Amplitude. So it's interesting because we do have this 1 in front, right? But amplitude, remember amplitude meant that the graph was stuck between two values. Is this graph stuck at all? It actually goes up towards infinity and down towards negative infinity, right? So for these reciprocal graphs, we're going to say there is no amplitude. Okay? What about x-intercepts? None. What about a y-intercept here? None. Now the domain is going to be a little trickier, right? The domain for sine x and cosine x was easy. That was negative infinity to infinity. Here we can't say negative infinity to infinity because we have asymptotes every pi, right? So here's how we can say what the domain is. Basically, x can be anything except, so we're going to say as long as x is not equal to, and let's pick the first starting value that we don't want for x. Zero, zero is bad, because at zero we're undefined. And where's the next value? And where's the one after that? Two pi. How far apart are all those bad values? So what do we add? Plus pi k where k is any integer. So as long as 0 is not a multiple of pi, right? 0, pi, 2, pi, 3, pi, negative pi, negative 2, pi. Everything else is in the domain. And actually, since we just did this, let's just slide this right over. The asymptotes are exactly the parts of the domain that we don't want. Does that make sense? What about the range? Negative 1, 2, or I'm sorry, I did that backwards. Negative infinity to negative 1. Do we include negative 1? Okay, so from here we stop at negative 1, so we're going to do union. And where do we pick back up with the range? At 1, and then we go to infinity. Are there any questions on this cosecant graph? Okay, so if you kind of understand how we got this new reciprocal graph for cosecant, we can do the same kind of thing. So let's do the secant graph. So for y equals secant theta, in purple, I'm going to do kind of like as a reference, what function? <coughs> cosine. So let's, I'm going to graph cosine in dotted lines, or dashed curve. We will. I'm just going to do it all in one. So here's our usual axis labeling for cosine, right? Where does cosine start? At, at 1. And then it goes down to 0, and then down to negative 1, up to 0, and back to 1, right? So this is the cosine shape. And now what I'm going to do is actually backtrack one more unit in the negative direction. Whoops. So everybody agrees that this is cosine, right? Where do the asymptotes come in? At pi over 2, because the reciprocal of 0 is undefined. Where else? Yep, that's why I went backwards a little bit. And 3 pi over 2. Very good. Okay. What do I do at the high point? 
Yep. So, <coughs> bless you. So secant was actually just going to be the reciprocal of all these values. And it's the same relationship that we had with sine, just kind of shifted over a little bit. And that's it. So if you know the cosine graph, secant is easy to graph. You just kind of graph enough of the cosine so you can see where the zeros are and where the high and low points are, and then you make parabolas at the high and low points, and all the zeros become, in, uh, become asymptotes. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, ooh, that was kind of a bad... You know what, let's write the details off to the side here, because for some reason they got carried over to the next page. So let's just do this. The period for the secant graph is what? 2 pi. <coughs> Amplitude? None, because this is not stuck between any numbers or anything. X-intercepts? None. Do we have a y-intercept here? What are the coordinates? 0, 1, or we could just say y equals 1, that's fine. Uh, domain. So let's do the same kind of thing we did with the other graph. Uh, easiest to probably say what x values are not good, right? So we'll say x cannot equal, and where's the first value that's not good? Negative pi over 2 is good. And then where's the next one? Pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. How far apart are all these? Those are also pi apart. So we'll say x cannot equal negative pi over 2 plus pi k, where k is any integer. Which then means that the um, asymptotes are going to be exactly those values. So we say x equals negative pi over 2 plus pi k, where k is any integer, would be the values of the asymptotes. What about the range? Same as before, right? Negative infinity to negative 1, union 1 to infinity. Okay. Are there any questions on how we got these graphs? Because I just want to do one quick example of where there's some movement. And then that's it for the notes, for at least for the first half of 8.5. We're good? Okay. So... Sorry. Yep. Okay. So here's what I'd like to do. In your notes, I'm going to leave these alone so that you guys can kind of work on these later on Monday. Go to your notebooks now just to do two quick practice problems. Let's say we wanted to graph um, y equals 3 cosecant pi x plus pi. Sure. Or is that in the graph? In the okay, so that one will be a little different. All right, so you may not know what to do initially for this, but what graph do we compare this to? Sine. So what I'm actually going to suggest is pretend this is sine and just kind of do a dotted or a dashed graph for sine and then use that to get the cosecant graph. Does that make sense? So um, for sine, we know A is 3, 
but there's no amplitude for the cosecant, right? The period is 2 pi divided by b, which in this case is 2 pi over pi, so the period is 2. Everybody good? What scale should I use if the period is 2? Divided into 4, so 1 half, good. Is there a phase shift? Phase shift is C over B, so we're going to say pi divided by pi, which is 1. And if we're adding, what direction is this? Left, very good. So these are the details for the sine graph. So I'm going to just quickly sketch the dotted or the dashed version of sine. I'm going to go left 1, and I'm going to use the scale to get the next value on the x-axis. So if I'm adding a half, what's the next one? Good. And then 0, 1 half, 1. Okay. And maybe we need to go further, but well, let's see what happens. We're thinking about what graph here? <coughs> thinking sine, right? We're thinking sine. So if we're shifted left to the one, uh, left to the one, if we're shifted left one unit, sine would start where? Zero, one, three, what, where does it start? At zero. At zero. Since A is three, the sign would have high and low points at 3 and negative 3, right? So I'm just going to kind of do a rough version of sign. Does everybody see where I'm getting that? Okay. Now that's not my final answer. That's just kind of a reference. Since cosecant is the reciprocal, do you guys see what to do now? At the intercepts, we make what? asymptotes. So the purple graph is my final graph. And then at the high point we have a little parabola, same with the low point. And there's one period. If you wanted to do more, that's fine. You guys kind of see how that works? Do you need a secant example, or do you guys think you got the hang of it? No, you want one? Do you have the hang of it? I want to find the highest point. Highest point. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, Saeed. <laughs> <laughs> yes? There's a phase shift. Does that just mean there's a name and shift Yes. Exactly. Yes? What's a period again? A period is how long the graph takes to repeat itself. Anything else? Okay. So there's also it's the number of units on the x-axis. Well, that would be the length, yes.